And we are the Nonprofits. Hi, everybody. I'm your host, Jeff D. Our producer, Russell Glasser. Hello. And uh, today's guest, Linda Raymond. Afternoon. I Hi. think Dennis LeBay should be in here. A oh, yeah? Did you talk to Dennis? Yeah. Cool. I, he uh, sounded like I had woken up when I called him, so... He, um, yeah, yeah. He is a, a late riser. My friend Dennis. Mind you, I myself was quite late to get to the, uh, get into the show today. Yes. You may have noticed. <laughs> I did notice. <laughs> the fact that I, I put my <laughs> ass in this chair about, you know, three minutes ago. Yeah. Was sort of a giveaway. I blame City of Heroes. Okay, good game, huh? Uh, yeah, it's, I'm in the uh, I'm in the beta test of City of Heroes, which for oh, those of you sweet. listening who don't know what that is, that is a massively multiplayer online superhero game where you make your own superhero run around and, and fight crimes. I was I want you to know I was making uh, our our city's streets safe. Oh, that's thank why you I was running late. <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping I'll get into the World of Warcraft beta soon, but oh yeah. A pretty popular one. Are you so. signed up for that? Yes, I am. See, with City of Heroes, they had a, like, for ten bucks at the computer store, you could get the, uh, pre-release copy, which guaranteed you entry into the beta test. Mm-hmm. And that's how I got in. Dennis is in it too. Sweet. Maybe I'll can, have to come over sometime. Get some of his <laughs> stories. Uh, today is, uh, April 10, 2004. Today's opening music, you may have recognized from a couple of episodes ago, was uh, Battle Without Honor or Humanity by Tomoyasu Hotai from the Kill Bill Volume 1 soundtrack. And um, I I think I'm going to stop trying to play a different song at the start of every episode. I've gone through my entire CD collection about three times now, uh, trying to uh, get, you know, either atheist songs or things uh, songs relevant to themes of shows that we were doing, and I, I I just think at this point it's going to get repetitive anyway, so why not bite the bullet, take the best song that we got, and and use that for our theme. So that's it. Um, thank you everyone for listening. Um, uh, welcome to all the people sitting in the chat room live today. Um, how many people we got in chat? Uh, I haven't counted yet. Okay. Uh, however, um, I posted a message on an Al Franken uh, fan site right before I came in. Yeah. So uh, if there are any regular Air America listeners out there, uh, hi, and <laughs> join in the chat. Looks like there's 24. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we have an estimate of 24 from that are in the chat room. Hi, everybody, and uh, uh, thanks once again to the Atheist Network for hosting our uh, our program. Okay, so who's got news? Me. Well, <laughs> well, has anybody, or I should say, has everyone by this time heard about the whipping of the Easter Bunny in yes. Glassport, Pennsylvania? I'm sure, I'm sure we all bought that story. <laughs> do you have the Easter Bunny whipping? I thought it. Yes, I do have the Easter Bunny whipping. Although I was hesitant to print it out at first because it really, really looked like one of those things that's written on something like the Onion, and somebody else picks it up. But. Uh, it's been on so many news sources that it qualifies as news now one way or the other. But what is being distributed by the AP? Yeah. Shall I? Shall I read it? Or do you you can. A church in western Pennsylvania trying to reach out, uh, excuse me, trying to teach about the crucifixion of Jesus performed an Easter show with actors whipping the Easter bunny and breaking eggs. Upsetting several parents and young children. Well, you know, if you want to convert people to Christianity, you got to break a few eggs. Ha ha ha! People who attended Saturday's performance at Glassport's Memorial Stadium quoted performers as saying, "There is no Easter Bunny," and described the show as being a demonstration of how Jesus was crucified. Oh, so the people whipping the Easter Bunny were good guys in this case. They were like, you know, the Jesus faithful who said, Take that, Easter Bunny! How dare you steal the thunder from our Lord? Something like that, yeah. Though, you know, again, depending on what flavor of Christian you're talking to, so were the Roman guards. Yeah. Because if they had refused to whip Jesus, he'd have been standing there going, Um, uh, guys, (laughs) I really need you to whip me with an inch of my life. (laughs) There's this magic trick we're trying to pull. (laughs) Melissa Salzman, who brought her four-year-old son, J.T., said the program was inappropriate for young children. He was crying and asking me why the bunny was being whipped, Salzman said. 
Patty Bickerton, a youth minister at Glassport Assembly of God, said the performance wasn't meant to be offensive. <laughs> what the hell? You're coming up on my favorite bit with the self-mutilation and the drunk. I want to know how those fit in. Uh, hang on. <laughs> it's the same story, unfortunately, in all the different places I found it. It's the exact same text, so mm-hmm. there is no explanation of those things. I know, it's When do we get to them in a minute? <laughs> I want to know how you do a show where you rip a cartoon bunny and say it wasn't meant to be offensive. If it was not meant to be offensive, then the people who put it on are morons. Yeah, like claiming that you were doing it in a spirit of irreverence makes everything good. What would people that, if you turn on Bugs Bunny, right? They blow people up with, with you know... With cannons and dynamite and stuff, and drop chandeliers on people's heads, right? Well, but that's, they're not that's, not that's, not <laughs> that's not meant to be offensive. <laughs> Never once is Bugs Bunny bent over and whipped. Not once. Uh, BNAM in the chat room would like to know what your superpowers are, Jeff. Ah. <laughs> well, it depends which character. At least in the beta test, you can have eight different characters per server. Though. Once a name is taken, it's completely taken. Like you, they have unique names across all the different servers. Um, my main character is Shatterman, and uh, I am a. They have these weird power classification things. I'm an energy projector kind of guy. I have like energy blasts and energy fists, just and like I just Pikachu. hit sixth level, huh? Just like Pikachu. Not just like Pikachu. Pikachu has electrical Let me get my whip. Come on. Uh, but I just hit sixth level, which is the point at which you can acquire the flight, the, the lowest level flight power. So I'm flying now, which is awesome. Completely awesome. Uh, anyway, so I hope that, <laughs> that answered his question. Um, we will talk more about Cities of, City of Heroes as the day rolls on, I'm sure. So, so how, you know, you whip an Easter bunny in front of some kids, and then you claim you weren't trying to be to be offensive. Well, you know, the only way you could not mean to be offensive is if you've got no grasp of what constitutes offense. Vickerton portrayed the Easter rabbit and said she tried to act with a tone of irreverence. Yeah, again. <laughs> there's irreverence, and then there's like, you know... Twisted S and M, and when you got a bunny, a pro- woman in a bunny suit being whipped, that's twisted S and M. No, no offense to our S and M fans. Out actually, there, I think you know, I'd kind of like you do in the that. privacy of your own homes. <laughs> seeing that, you what? Huh? I think I'd kind of like seeing that now that you put it that way. <laughs> Only if eventually you know the costume comes off. <laughs> the program was for all ages, not just the kids. <laughs> that makes it okay. <laughs> yeah, you know, we were going to do this happy, you know, happy Easter morning bunny program with colored eggs and, and hoppy rabbits and stuff. But then we thought, if there's going to be adults there, we better put in some S&M. I'd like to see if this church will put out a Christmas special one of these days. You know, sort of like, sort of like, oh, hi there, Rudolph. How are you? Hi, Santa. Go over here. What? Ow! America's Funniest Home Whippings. <laughs> Performers broke eggs. Wait a minute, I'm sorry. Program is for all ages, not just about, not just the kids. We wanted to convey that Easter is not just about the Easter Bunny. It is also about Jesus. It is about Jesus Christ. Well, yeah, but... It's about a lot of gods when you get right what down image, to it. Okay, you have your Easter ceremony, right? On the one hand... You talk about Jesus. On the other hand, you whip the Easter bunny. Which of those images are the little kitties going to be taken home? What know. are they going to think Easter's all about? I think if they're going to whip... Easter was the day when God instructed mankind to whip little woodland creatures. I think that if they're going to whip the Easter bunny, they ought to put Jesus, like, wearing a pink tutu running around laying eggs. <laughs> Easter bunny doesn't lay eggs, man. There's a basket. <laughs> yeah, well. Performers broke eggs meant for an Easter egg hunt. Now that's nice. Because, you know, Easter eggs are yummy. <laughs> it's like, you know, the, 
No comment on that. It's like having Halloween and like, you know, ooh, kids, look, here's all the candy that you could have had if we hadn't crushed it with a sledgehammer. I don't know. We never ate any eggs we found at Easter egg hunts. No? No. Why? Because they're always usually warm and spoiled by that time. Oh. Well, if you find them right away. <laughs> they broke eggs meant for an Easter egg hunt and also portrayed a drunken man and a self-mutilating woman. Because that's great for the kids. You know, that's what I want to have explained. How did those fit in? Self-mutilating woman. A flagellant, I suppose. Maybe she was just jealous of the Easter Bunny, and that was her job. Oh, flagellant. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, said Jennifer Norelli Burke, another parent who show, uh, saw the show in Glassport, a community about 10 miles southeast of Pittsburgh. It was very disturbing, Norelli Burke said. I could not believe what I saw. It wasn't anything I was expecting. (laughs) Christians are really getting into this whole, like, pulling a fast one, switcheroo, you know. Let's let's have a motivational thing for the kids, you know, with happy clowns. No, you get there, and it's an invitation to church. And the crowns are crying. The crowns are crying. Crowns are crying? Yes. Well, Chris, I mean, they just got a history of doing really scary stuff. Easter seems to bring out the masochism in them. You're familiar with what they do? I guess it's in the Philippines. They actually put on crowns of thorns yeah. and they put stocks. And I was listening they to an interview. nails and crosses. I was listening to an interview with one of them, and he was talking about how he loved walking and feeling the thorn biting into his flesh because every drop of blood was just that much more love for God. You. <laughs> yes. uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome <laughs> Mr. Dennis Lube. Yes. Hello. Hello. Uh, you might want to check Dennis's sound level there. Ah, I'll do it while Dennis he talks. Wanna... <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Raise his voice. So there. So anyway. So there you go. <laughs> what? But what is with this? I mean, it's one thing to say that, to try to spin the completely unfair claim that because this guy voluntarily had himself tortured and you benefited from it. But therefore, you owe him something. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Especially since he was not Because you can't make people owe something by doing them favors. Right? But don't forget, the reason for the need of this favor was his dad getting angry in the first place. Right. Well, so they, that was no favor. They keep saying it's a gift. Yes. But gifts do not carry obligations. Right. By definition. Right. If, it's a, if, it, if, if it carries an obligation, then it's a payment. Exactly. And these that you're for expected services. to pay for services you didn't order. Right. What if you wanted to go to hell? <laughs> and of course, and we, when you have no choice for payment, that's when we start calling it extortion. Yeah. That's right. Nice savior you got over here. Love me or go to hell. <laughs> yeah, yeah right. Or something that happened to him. If somebody else said, but, oh, wait, love me or I'll happened, shoot you. But that's the thing. <laughs> you wouldn't think that was love. But, You'd think that was twisted hate. But since the passion... Where it's becoming more and more obvious that Christians are like, they get off on the violence. They get off on the blood and yeah. the pain and the torture. They're not just saying, oh, it's such a terrible thing that, that Jesus had to go through all that. They're going, oh, what a glorious thing he did. You know, it's like, oh, it's, it's good it's grief. Sick. Yeah, it's really sick. And then, of course, they try to equate his few hours of suffering to entire lifetimes that humans go through, mm-hmm. like George Ann, who still hasn't responded on the news group yet. <laughs> you were oh. A- <laughs> What's this all about? Something going on on AA at the moment? Yeah. No, yeah you the all- alt-atheism news group? Yeah. Correct. No, in fact, you, you sent a message to her just yesterday. Did I? I don't really usually look who I respond to. I just look at the message and go, oh, yeah? <laughs> well, she's one of those people who's arguing that... It's not temporary. It was not a temporary inconvenience. Oh, right, right. And people are coming back with, yes, he was he was inconvenienced for three days for your sins. <laughs> it's like... Yeah, but see, that's the neat thing about all this blood and horror and stuff that they go through is at the end, you get to rule the universe. That's right. You know? That's what makes it King good. of the world. It's, Woo! It's, it's not King a of the world! That's right. King of the world, Ma. <laughs> I am reminded... The of century. the film version of the musical Little Shop of Horrors. Mm-hmm. Where the guy in the dental chair telling the story about the painful 
uh, dental procedure he underwent, and then he got a candy bar. <laughs> and so now he goes from dentist to dentist, having horrible, painful things done to his teeth, and getting off on it, yelling, candy bar, mm-hmm. candy bar, candy bar. <laughs> Bill Murray. Bill right? Murray. Yeah. It's the same kind of thing. Uh-huh. Like, oh, this horrific pain. And you get something nice. And suddenly, the horrible pain is like it's the associated prize. with it's, nice. It's the prize <laughs> unto itself. Right. Uh, sick. It's just sick. And it's institutionalized sickness. Yeah. Does it, seem, does it seem to you guys like Christianity goes through these, I don't know, fads? Because um, I don't, I don't remember do the whole specific? wallowing in the blood of Jesus thing being Quite this so openly embraced. Apart from, hmm. you know, you hear like places uh, in the Philippines you know where what? people get, have been getting I, themselves crucified for years. I happen to have, it's an incredible coincidence, I happen to have a New York Times editorial that I wasn't even sure I wanted uh, to bring up. Yeah? Is it relevant? It's the return of the warrior Jesus. Oh, oh boy. Okay. And I'll just read a little bit. I didn't of know it. they ever had one of those. <laughs> oh yeah. What is this the, not the writers? Figure. <laughs> what is this whole thing about not bringing a sword? <laughs> writers and artists have been imagining the second coming of Jesus for oh. 2000 years, but few have portrayed him wreaking more carnage on the unbelieving world than Tim LaHaye and Jerry B. Jenkins. You know who they are. In their new apocalyptic novel, Glorious Appearing, based on Dr. LaHaye's interpretation of biblical prophecies about the second coming, their Jesus appears from the clouds on a white horse with a conviction like a flame of fire in his eyes. With all the gruesome detail of a Hollywood horror movie, Jesus eviscerates the flesh of millions of unbelievers merely by speaking. Kind of like Raiders of the Lost Ark. Glorious is coming, huh? Um, <clears throat> I'll skip a bit. Yeah, that's Scholars boring. who study religion in American culture say the trend partly reflects the growing clout of evangelical Christians and the relative decline of liberal main, mainline Protestant denominations over the last 30 years. The image of a fearsome Jesus who will turn the tables on the unbelieving earthly authorities corresponds to a widespread sense among many conservative Christians that their values are under assault in a culture war with the secular society around them. The shift coincides with a surging interest in biblical prophecies of the apocalypse around the turn of the millennium, which we all know fell really flat. (laughs) The terrorist attacks of September 11th and the two wars with Iraq. And the warlike image of Jesus also fits with President George W. Bush's discussions of a godly purpose behind American military actions in Afghanistan and Iraq. There are also signs of the same shift in Mel Gibson's movie, The Passion. Uh, When you stand up, uh, when you see him stand up at the end of the movie, he reminds you of Schwarzenegger, said Stephen Prothero, a religion professor at Boston University and author of American Jesus, A New Cultural History. I think that movie shows a more, more of a macho Jesus, who in this case is brutalized instead of brutalizing. So it's not your imagination, Jeff, or if it is, a lot of other people have imagined the same things. But it was also... Well, but that's, that's another, that's a different fad. Right. Mm-hmm. One fad is, hey, you check out all this blood. Ain't that cool? And this one is, you know, yeah, we're going to take those unbelievers and strip the flesh off them. By the way, well, speaking but, as one of the aforementioned unbelievers that's mm-hmm. going to get his flesh stripped from his body by Jesus talking, yeah, I'm shocked. No, no you're not. <laughs> well, if this was Analyzed? A, if this was a book. Called Glorious Coming about Hitler's second coming and how he gasses more Jews, then people would be shocked. But it's just unbelievers, so it's okay. Yeah. But also this whole well, thing like, about like in Raiders of the Lost Ark, it was Nazis getting their flesh melted, so it was okay. <laughs> so it was okay. <laughs> well, are any of y'all familiar with Billy Sunday? I believe his name was. He was a preacher back around the nineteen. 19- 1890s, 19, early 1900s. Did he strip flesh from people's bones? No, but he was an ex-boxer, and he would actually challenge people to, who disagreed with him or didn't believe in Jesus to come up and fight him over it. 
Uh, oh, he would have wanted to strip the flesh from. Yeah, from no, that was his whole thing. Was uh, he had the exact same idea of Jesus there? The two fists. In fact, he was uh, <laughs> two fisted son of a gun. He had this massive revivalist. And if anybody's ever read Babbitt, they, he was the parody of him was in there. I think they called him Billy Monday in that. Wow. Hmm. But he was a real preacher who was just one of the forerunners of this entire Tim LaHaye bit of garbage. Interesting. Um, I I think that I think the trends are related. I mean, yeah. uh, the the blood and the uh, well, it's all this extreme it, evangelistic sort of. Yeah, it's it's a Jesus who kicks ass. Yeah, you know how we got there? Largely, tell me how we got there. via the promise keepers that went at Christianity from a sports perspective. They did. Yeah, I the the all the. The Promise Keeper events, well, first of all, the guy who ran it was this retired <laughs> football coach. Uh-huh. And their, excuse me, in the uh, re- uh, articles I've read about what went on at their meetings, it was all full of sports imagery. And sports, of course, is just a metaphor for war. It's all competition. For, yeah, it's a metaphor for war. Right. And aren't the promise keepers the ones who are obsessed with the idea of men regaining their manhood and yeah, women getting the hell back in the kitchen? Yeah, and stomping the wives, making them submissive. So this is just sort of reclaiming Jesus' manhood. Yeah, it's extremely sick. Well, so the whole thing is, honey, I promised that I would be in charge and order you about when we got married. Yeah, they and I have terms fallen, of protection. And I have fallen short of my promise. The whole promise keepers thing is, I promised that I was going to be the boss. And I'm going to keep that promise, so shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, well, I promise you can sleep on the couch tonight. <laughs> <laughs> terrible, terrible, terrible. Yeah. Very bad. Um, I, hmm? I was going to say, I'd never even thought of the connection between those two, because I'm familiar with the Promise Keepers and how dreadful they are. They are but, pretty dreadful. Well, they're, yeah. Now, I heard oh, for a while that their, that their membership was way down, and I haven't, I haven't seen them much in the news lately. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's faded, but it's moved on then from, you know, the sports analogy to this military analogy, right? Oh, boy. Yeah, they all signed up for the Army. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well. So, any real related news, or shall I go on to uh, what I've related. got? No. It's sort of peripherally connected. Not really. <clears throat> Passion of the Christ inspires wave of crime confessions. Wow, a wave. A wave meaning there was a second one, or a wave meaning there were a whole bunch of them? Um, As far as I know, there's been two. Four. 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 Okay, Okay, so now we know that that four constitutes a wave. (laughs) Critics of Mel Gibson's controversial (laughs) blockbuster, The Passion of the Christ, have expressed fear (laughs) the film would spark an outbreak of violence. When? Did anybody ever hear? I mean, they, there was concern that it would that it would inspire a wave of anti-Semitism, mm-hmm. which of course would eventually end in violence. Right. right. Well, it did murder two people, but that's I think that's probably what they're referring to. <laughs> yeah, but there. Uh, I I should mention this is a very biased article, so expect more of that. Where did it come from? Um, I forget. Okay. But instead, it continues to prompt criminals from burglars to murderers to confess to crimes committed as long as a decade ago. The fourth recent instance of confession to a crime was reported yesterday yesterday in Mesa, Arizona, where a man walked up to police Sunday at the scene of a burglary and confessed to the break-in as well as five or six others. He had made some mention that after watching the Mel Gibson movie, that was his motive for turning himself in, said Mesa Police Detective Ruben Quesada, according to the East Valley Tribune in suburban Phoenix. It is a first, Quesada told the paper. Well, no, it's a fourth, moron. (laughs) Meanwhile, at least three other confessions have been reported in a relationship to the film, in relationship to the film. In Norway, a neo-Nazi confessed to two decade-old bombings after watching Gibson's depiction of the suffering and death of Jesus Christ. Near Houston, a man seeking redemption confessed to killing his girlfriend. We did that story last time. In Florida, a fugitive from a bank robbery two years ago said he turned himself into police after watching Gibson's film. Makes you stop and think. 
Yeah. What are the kind of people who watch that movie? Yeah. <laughs> are they actually are they offering corroborative evidence or are they just popping up and saying, I did this, take it take me, you know, take it my trust? Yeah, maybe they're like what Bill Murray. Is, they just maybe like, get they're off like on Jesus. going to jail. Maybe they want to be punished for something that they're not guilty of. Yeah, this could be a way of oh. getting notoriety or getting in good with their church. I mean at least the Nazi was a Christian, so he had that excuse, I suppose. In the Arizona case, Turner Lee Bingham, 20, walked up to a Mesa store about eight minutes after the alarm sounded and apologized to police for taking $80 from the register before confessing to five or six burglaries at the other places. Wait a minute. I was thinking, as I read this, okay, he did the robbery, went to see the movie, next morning shows up at the crime scene. No, he was only away eight minutes. So he'd already seen the film and then did a bank robbery. Or was just walking down the street and just took advantage of it. Or else he, yeah, else he didn't do it in the right. first place. And there's some, there's some, uh, there's, <laughs> there's some a- bank robber doing the little <laughs> dance of glee. <laughs> Look at this, the <laughs> back for me. Woo-hoo. I guess I owe him something. <laughs> was that a reference to Barabbas in the movie? Yeah, was it, yes, that was, that was a Barabbas movie. reference. Because okay. not everybody's seen the movie, you know. I can't help being reminded, though, of, of like, a Sesame Street skit uh, where they had the young George Washington doing the famous cherry tree scene. Yeah. And he says, I can't tell a lie, Father. I, I chopped down the cherry tree. And the dad goes, oh, it's okay, George. Like, really? Okay. And then he goes and chops down another one. He says, I can't tell a lie, Father. I chopped down that one, too. And finally, the father just goes after him. <laughs> Bingham had seen the passion with his mother, and he felt guilty, the store owner, Tobias Bright, uh, said, the police told him. I've seen the movie myself, Bright told KNXV-TV of Phoenix. This is the store owner now. I think it's the kind of movie that makes you stop and think about things for a minute. (laughs) For a minute. Well, it's a good thing well, that that made minute, him stop that and that think minute for happened minutes. days later <laughs> in the eight-minute span between the time he did the robbery right. and the time he turned himself back in. Because if he had stopped and thought for a minute during the film, he'd have been out and robbing and had that thinking behind him. Yeah. <laughs> I should I should point out that our show makes you think it makes you think for more than a minute, and we don't. It doesn't take us two hours to get around to it. We do it in an hour and a half. <laughs> Uh, As a matter of fact, we often make you think of about 15 different things during the course of the show. That's <laughs> and just no one the kind of flesh show we are. Bones. Yes. You know what you're reminding me of is when I went to the dentist myself a few weeks ago, the assistant there, when she's coming at me with all these little pointy things, I said that she had already seen The Passion twice, and um, she had been thinking about it a lot. You know, I didn't How did this come up? She just mentioned it out of the freaking blue. I couldn't believe it. She's coming at you with some pointy implements <laughs> saying... You know, I recently watched The Passion of the Christ. <laughs> exactly. She has, she has, if I had any intention of going to see it. Wow. And what we give you is a genuine gift. We don't expect anything in return. Bright, who identified himself as a Christian. There you go, once again. This is the, this mm-hmm. is the yeah. bank robber. Right. Christian bank robber. Christian bank robber. Christian bank robber had been robbing all the time. Not robbing identified repeatedly. as a Christian bank robber in the story, I'll bet. No, no, no Un- never. Unlike when you see, like, it says Muslim terrorist or and something like that. You don't see, like, Christian bank robber. And he has done this. six or seven burglaries. Not bank robbers. Yeah, the burglaries. burglaries. Six or seven burglaries, according to his confession. Needs All but more. one of which apparently happened before seeing The right. Passion. Unless he saw The Passion and has committed some other burglaries that he didn't feel so guilty about. <laughs> and it was only this one he said was where luckily that minute of thinking occurred and he said, oh, crap. <laughs> and it was in Mesa, Arizona? We're going to have to follow up and see if he was really found guilty. Hmm. Bright, who identified himself as a Christian, said he wished Bingham would have felt guilty 20 minutes earlier before he took a uh-huh. baseball bat to one of my windows. <laughs> but he said, if you're going to be burglarized, I don't think it could turn out any better. 
Um, yes. Oh, right. given, given that you're going to be burglarized, if the guy comes back eight minutes later and says, here's my stuff, you know, here's your stuff back, mm, yeah, that's about as good as that's true. Doesn't, doesn't if, you think don't, is, if you don't assume that you're going to be burglarized, I would think that mm, not being burglarized is even better. better. Right, yes. that's true. But apparently he uh, he must think it v- would violate some law of physics if the thief came back within, oh, say, seven minutes. Because wouldn't that be better? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> the Norwegian, 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 Norwegian neo-Nazi Johnny Olsen, 41, went to police after watching the movie explaining he was responsible for unexplained bombings against anarchist squatters in Oslo. In 1994 and 1995. Oh, there's a way to handle anarchy. Bomb them. Yeah, the anarchists didn't bomb them right back. The trigger that made him go to police and confess was that movie. His lawyer, Friedhoff Fate, told Reuters on Monday. Olson had long been concerned with issues such as reconciliation and redemption. We read that in the other story, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah, he'd long been concerned with them, but didn't think about them for a minute until after he saw this film. Uh, concerned with all that stuff, but boy, you know, not when he was planting those bombs, I guess. You know, some other interesting facts looking for that story would be, were the police almost on his trail anyway? Does he th- does he think it's going to be to his benefit to pretend to have become been so religious that he's turning himself in? I and mean, how close were they to finding him? Don't know. Or, or don't is that know. just being too skeptical? The don't <laughs> might that is a I mean, fair question. You have to consider these issues, but it's like you know, when you come vote. down to it, you you have to I mean you can't just assume that there are no cases where uh some complete bastard has only the threat of hell. Uh I, we had this discussion on the last show. Yeah. Yeah. Also I wanna say speaking as a costume crime fighter, that I don't want the crooks coming back eight minutes later and confessing. I want them pulling out a gun and blasting at me so I have an excuse to go at it with my energy rays. <laughs> and then, if they run, I want to chase them down and, and pummel them to, into submission. Right, sure. We already had a discussion. Yeah. Oh, okay, before good. You got here. But but were you and that's a, why I'm late. So, anyway. <laughs> was it? Yeah. I was here five oh, minutes man. before airtime. <laughs> Going after who are those guys in City of Heroes that are the Hellions. like robed the robed uh, cultist guys? I don't know. For some reason, they got Shadow Man going after those people. Oh boy. Um. <laughs> back to the news. Hey, <laughs> we explained City of Heroes okay, to okay. them. They know what we're talking about. Um, Oslo's. Uh, Lutheran Bishop Gunnar Stahlstedt maintained his insistence that the film glorifies sadism and torture. <laughs> well, he's right. correct. This does not change. This does not change my view that the film is in the slightest. He told Norwegian Daily Verdans Gang, according to Reuters. Oh, so we have a bloody movie, supposedly. As people confess. <laughs> yeah, of course, sometimes being in, being religious causes you to do some not-so-nice things, which kind of balances out the uh, the nice things that some people do. So let's see. Four example, people have confessed since seeing the movie. Now, how many Christians have committed burglarized crimes. and committed crimes after seeing the movie? <laughs> Four well, compared to what? Uh, let's look at something that religion actually causes. Um, we'll do that as soon as I'm done with my story. Oh, darn. <laughs> Sorry. We covered the... I thought you were. There was we a covered moment the, of silence <clears throat> and everything. And it was a good note to end on with a bishop actually yeah. showing sense. There's more. There's more. We we talked about the uh, Texas case. That's the murder in yes. the section last show. In the Florida case, after more than two years as a fugitive from a bank robbery, James Anderson said he turned himself into police after watching Gibson's movie. The Palm Beach Gardens case had stumped police, but Anderson surprised investigators by walking into the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office lobby March 16, saying he was ready to give himself up. Anderson, 53, now admits he grabbed an employee of a Palm Beach Gardens bank in December 2001 and forced tellers to hand over $25,000, the Palm Beach Post reported. The sheriff's detective asked Anderson why he came clean after all this time. 
Anderson said he was stirred deeply after watching The Passion of the Christ. He said, I saw The Passion, and that made my decision. You know, I've noticed that none of these are direct quotes from the person. These are all secondhand from the people that captured them. Hmm. Well, they're the only ones allowed to make statements, I guess. Well, no, that's... Oh, there was one the from the lawyer. One from the lawyer. Yeah, which is but still second hand, but that's as close as it gets. But the lawyer was the one who was out of the country, too. <clears throat> yeah. Right. He chose to look up on the U.S. one, I'd imagine. He said, I saw the passion and that made my decision, said Sheriff's Office spokesman Paul Miller, according to the Palm Beach new, uh, newspaper. And he sort of urged the detective to see the movie, too. Oh. Right. After interrogating him at length... Hopefully not with gorgeous and crowns of thorns. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> Palm Beach Gardens police sus- uh, Palm Beach Gardens police suspect, however, the homeless man's surrender was much more calculated. He's looking for medical attention, and he doesn't have uh, that he doesn't have to pay for. The uh, Palm Beach Gardens police sergeant Richard Geist. That, and like he's that. probably tired of living out on the streets. He's a homeless person, and he went to see The Passion of the Christ? Yeah, that's yeah, like eight, eight bucks. bucks. <laughs> well, unless he caught a matinee. Or just snuck in. Or they go along going, you know, no, a spare not- change, I need eight bucks to see a movie. You know, I, <laughs> you know, I gotta say that that movie does not inspire a lot of confidence that you'll be treated well after, after being arrested. No. I wonder how many of these guys are waking up the next day in their prison cell and wondering why they're not the glowing and thinking? ready to walk off camera into the sky. <laughs> yeah. What well, the I, I wonder I if there are any people who were planning to confess anyway, but then they go to see the movie and they're like, oh, shit, I don't want that to happen to me. So they change <laughs> their they minds. Go, oh, hey, no, this guy's taking the fall already. <laughs> oh, that too. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess there's no need for me to worry about my sins. That's right. I'll, I'll be judged. I'll be judged on Judgment Day. That's fine. I'll let it go there. <laughs> yeah. I'll do anything I want now. Did you know something Besides, else? you know, they missed the entire point. The they entire did. point was Jesus died to forgive them of their sins. Right. If they had gotten the point of the film, they would just not feel any more guilt. Right. They've been. They would be amoral. They have been monsters. forgiven of their sins. Right. But you know something else interesting in that story, whether it was from the people themselves or from the reporter, each of them said the passion made the decision for them. So even when they're supposedly confessing, they're not using their brain to do it. Right. They're still letting some religious thing think oh, for them. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. It's like saying... Are you sure that's not from the World Net Daily? It might be. Why? So, I was just saying, it sounds like the sort of thing they would, they would run. No yeah. hard facts. Tries to pump up Christianity. Wait, you're right. It was World Net Daily. Figures. You asked me yeah. earlier where the story was from. Yeah. On that daily. But if four people... Anyway, it's I, like getting it off of Fox News. Mm-hmm. There's a there's a punchline. Go ahead. Everybody. <laughs> Amid these reports, a new documentary is in the works to prove the passion of the Christ has produced miracles in the lives of its viewers. Oh, Makers of Changed Lives, Miracles of the Passion, say they have interviews with people who claim the controversial film has changed them. They want more people for the documentary and ask on a website for stories of miracles such as a marriage being rescued. Yeah, because... Because you can't do that without a movie. Yeah, and a miracle. It's a a miracle, right? A loved one dropping dead. Marriages never get, you know, reconciled by purely purely human physical forces. An addict who was set free because nobody stops taking drugs without seeing a movie. A Jew who now accepts Jesus as Messiah. Oh God! Because that's a miracle, right? When you when you deprive somebody of their original belief system right. and get yours in their head instead. A black man who is now white. Right. Someone who experienced physical or emotional healing, because you know, no, nobody, nobody ever can do that. recovers from no. emotional stress without. Seen a Jesus movie. Yeah, and plus, how can you verify that they actually recovered? Right, really? Yeah, bring me the person who regrew a severed limb after right. seeing The Passion of the Christ. Yeah, and I will go. And document that, and I will agree that's a miracle. 
Executive producer Jody Eldred told MSNBC's The Scoop column, we have gone to websites where there are in excess of 70,000 stories about how people were touched by this film, so we have plenty to choose from. You could get that from a Star Trek convention. That's right. That's right. Touched by a Klingon. <laughs> I mean, you think that those people could not talk about how how the optimism of Roddenberry changed their life or something? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Well, clearly, and Star, Star Wars is maybe a better example because there's actual practicing Jedi in Britain. This is true. It's good for them. So, four people constitute a wave. Well, 70,000 constitute a wave. Oh, right. Well, I'm sorry, but those are just those are just stories of oh, something good happening to them after they saw the film. You're right. right. They were, the wave was in reference to uh, confessions. Yeah, so now we have to... I saw the passion, and then I found my is. car keys that I had misplaced earlier. <laughs> yes. It's a miracle. But are they counting the people who died as miracles? That was pretty miraculous. It was unexpected. Yeah. Yeah, why don't they True. have those guys? They're dead. Uh, yeah. He went into the movie, but now he's dead. dead. <laughs> <laughs> no, but now they're, they're experiencing eternal bliss, so... Yeah, and the Hallelujah. family who saw it with him, they're way past their emotional trauma. <laughs> but they were touched by the film, so oh, yeah. <laughs> big miracle came down, right? Daddy died in the movies. Isn't that great? That's wonderful. We're happy. He's now. in a better place now. A better seat. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it looks the like a great it's balcony in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you make you know, it cry. looks like it's starting to storm pretty hard. I was going to say maybe this is an indication of what a show like ours can do. That's right. Let's claim credit for the rain. Yeah, if there's anybody uh, listening to the show, um, either live or uh, or uh, in a recording, would you please send us your emails of the miracles that have occurred in your life after listening to the Nonprofits Audio Show here for instance, on the Atheist Network? If it wasn't cloudy and now it is, or if it was cloudy and now it isn't, yeah, that's due to us. It's all due to us. Yeah. Anything different? Anything? Any change that occurred? from before we started the show <laughs> to now is considered a miracle from us. So, Or if you're it. thinking about the show later and something nice happened, you know? That could be that minute that our show makes you think. But if it's a bad thing that happened, it has nothing to do with us. Also, it would be great, those of you who have done crimes, if you'd please go, please go confess your crimes and say it was our show. We could really yes, use the, please. We that could really use the press. Uh... The problem is with with the millions of viewers that the passion has, the statistical odds of them happening to catch somebody. <laughs> but they made a mistake in the passion, something. right? It doesn't actually say. They don't flash a you know a message on the screen. Go confess your crimes now and credit Maybe this film. They did. We're doing that. <laughs> Maybe right. that's, that's why. That's why our success rate is going to be higher than theirs. Okay. We're taking the proper marketing approach. <laughs> Would uh, would you like to do some news, Russell? I would actually. Go for like it. You had a you had a follow up story. Okay? Yes, I did. Uh, you know, uh, yet another woman killed her kids within the last couple of weeks. For Jesus as and well. When I, yeah. Well, see, you don't even have to say that because when I hear one of these stories come up, the first thing that goes to my head is, okay, when are we going to get to the for Jesus part? Mm-hmm. It's completely it's yeah, like one hundred percent predictable. I have not heard any cases come up of atheists killing their kids. Although, if one does come up, boy, will that get a lot of press. Yeah. This mother, who lived right here in Texas, Tyler, Texas, uh, claimed that God ordered her to bash in the heads of her sons with stones. Mm-hmm. Nice biblical. Yeah, yeah, very biblical. Nice biblical. Because blessed are those. It. But she did it backwards. You're supposed to dash your little ones against the stones. Yeah, well, I mean, throwing stones at them is yeah. is also biblical. Yeah. Uh, she was acquitted of all charges by reason of insanity this week after a jury determined she did not know right from wrong during the killings. Let that right. sink in for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> People who think they hear God are insane. And they don't know right from wrong. And they don't but know they never, right from wrong. Which is just what drives me By nuts, definition. Is... That conclusion is never reached until they've gone out 
and done some crazy, insane crime. Right, because if right. you could actually predict, hey, Until you then, know, you're hearing people. voices from God, let me get you professional help, they might not get around to killing their kids. Right. But no, they hear voices from God, oh, you're so lucky. Yeah. What? <gasps> you killed somebody? You're not lucky. You're insane. Suddenly. Uh-huh. A jury found on Saturday that Deanna Laney was legally insane on May 9th when she killed her two older sons, ages 6 and 8, in the front yard and left the youngest, now 2, maimed in his crib. And what were the children's names? Weren't they good old-fashioned Old Testament names? Oh, I bet they were. I mean, they were in all the other cases, but it doesn't say in this story. Maybe we can put that on an intervention list. Look for people who name their children thus wise. Hmm. Yeah. Protect those kids who are named Jeb and... (laughs) Tazeke. Yeah. Laney broke into tears as the verdict was read. Her husband, Keith Laney, sat solemnly with his head down. A few jurors cried and struggled to maintain their composure. State law allows Laney to be committed to a maximum security state hospital. Medical evaluations will dictate when she will be released. She will remain at the Smith County Jail until a hearing regarding her transfer. Um, There was a follow-up to that that I heard, but I have no documentation. Okay. Which was that sitting in jail, she announced that she expected one of her children to resurrect Ah. on a certain date. Mm Mm-hmm. Which is now coming gone. It's a rumor I've I've heard, and I don't know for sure. I, I, I heard that story. She expected both of her children to actually come and, and comfort her in her tribulations, I think. Yeah, right. So she's yeah. still a Christian. And they don't mention whether she had gone to see the Passion of the Christ recently. Right. <laughs> no mention. No, she was in jail before the before July. Really? Are you sure? Uh, I'm pretty sure, because I remember yeah. hearing about Story, the, the actual the attack. The broke before? Yeah, well, I, I remember me and my dad uh, listening to it, and he died last okay. summer. Uh, well, you're sure well, you're not going to be her with the woman in I Houston? I believe this has been the third that. case. Oh, oh, really? This was in the last few weeks. Yeah, this is oh, real okay. recent. Okay. Yeah. No, I, I wasn't aware that there was somebody else who took three children out to the yard and, and killed them. Huh. Or attacked them with rocks. Okay. Oh, yeah. maybe don't know. But boy. <clears throat> God, that's so creepy. Well, that's what you get when you take a certain dog when you drill it into people when they're too young to even consider it. Uh-huh. Yeah. All right. Do the church be held responsible for any of this? Um, no. Aw. Well, if God spoke to her, it's 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 a uh, conspiracy to commit murder. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> See that big I... over there? Did they, you know, did the court consider that she actually had a message from God to kill her children? No. And, you know, <laughs> you've seen the movie, uh, um, Oh, oh God, with, uh, with, uh, George. Burns. Mm-hmm. Um, George. George Burns. Which at, ends in the courtroom scene where God proves his existence to everybody in there. You never see one of those with, you know, Somebody who went and committed horrific crimes because God told them to. And then God shows up in the courtroom and says, yes, it's true. I told them to. Except there was the movie. <laughs> there was the movie. Um, Lovable George Burns. There was the movie about the, the weird serial killer guy who frailty. was in fact. Frailty. Was in fact appointed by God. You haven't seen this film? No, I haven't. You yeah, that that was, that was, actually, I frailty haven't. is a horror film where the premise is. The, the, uh, that God exists, and uh, he really did all the stuff in the Old Testament, and that's still how he wants his, like, his uh, special prophets here on Earth to behave. Right, the guy has, like, the acts of justice and the lead pipe of truth and stuff like that. Yeah. Oh, God, isn't it like what Bible verse man has? He has his... his... I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> so, so this guy, you know, the first part of the movie is, you know, all the story of this little kid whose father goes nuts and believes that he's been appointed by God to slay demons. And then he starts going out and capturing people, bringing them home and killing them Mm. and raises the kids to do it. And then at the end, you discover that not only is the, is this story true, but the guy really is appointed by God and has magical superpowers. So he was like like the second coming. uh, 
it's yeah, you know, the he's interesting Jesus, point he's just at a, the end he's is, just a he's just a you know god appointed warrior. Yeah, the interesting point at the end is it's not any less creepy because you find out that it's really God doing it. No, it's extra I mean, creepy. In fact, it it even turns out that the people he killed were actually did actually do some things, mm-hmm. and yet it's still creepy. Right, because we no longer have in our culture we no longer have this uh, idea that that it's okay to be a vigilante to go out and you know oh. That person did a crime that was bad, so I'll take the law into my own hands and just go kill them, right? Which is terrible because you know I'd rather be out there in my superhero costume, blasting people <laughs> with, my, with my energy rays. <laughs> it is a great, it is a great fantasy, but uh, it's not but reality. But, but no, it's not reality. also trusting in the judgment of the vigilantes to begin with. Right, that's right. Right, which now, is you, why we don't like vigilantes in real life. You can see right. them in action in real life just by going to Colorado Springs, Arizona, where the Mormons have been taking care of, you know, running off the people who are not, have made themselves outcasts, I think is the, word, the way they phrase it. Really? Oh, come on, I believe we even talked about oh, yeah. this a while back. Uh, they're running off the people, and then they're giving their wives and children to all the, the good members. But all the people who are the, the mayor, actually he's, he's the mayor almost in name only, but the person who made him mayor, the people who actually run the town, they just kick it together and they run you out if you're asking too many questions. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but Colorado is something. I know it wasn't Colorado Springs, actually. It was like Colorado City or something. So anyway, that, uh, the, that's a great film. Yes, I it, strongly it carries the non-profit and, seal of approval. In fact, if you get the DVD version, there are deleted scenes that put a much finer point on the message wow. of the film. Or that, that little boy tries to get his father to stop by reading him Bible passages that say that you shouldn't kill, and the and the father has a snappy Christian, you know, apologetics answer for everyone. Yeah. Uh, people in the chat room have started talking about Air America, and I'd like to join in, if, All right. if uh, you don't mind. Yeah, what about Air America? Uh, well, since we did our last show, <laughs> Air America Radio, home of Al Franken, the new liberal, uh, the new liberal talk show, uh, network, which is going to be popping up in states everywhere, we hope, uh-huh. uh, got their launch. Uh, I managed to listen to Al Franken every day since the first day, mm-hmm. and regardless, very well. regardless of what you've heard from conservative commentators, and <laughs> there have been plenty of conservative commentators oh, yeah. to talk about it, the show, most of the shows are great. I agree. Uh, and since we can't be here for you every day... <laughs> Now, wait a minute. The Atheist Network is here for him every day. That's true. The Atheist Network is here, although they do a lot of reruns. But they now, have supposedly, many fine shows. Supposedly, they were going to have um, uh, past episodes on demand from the Air America website, but I hadn't seen them, haven't seen them appear yet. Okay. Uh, eventually, I hope they will. Yeah. Presumably, they've been recording everything all along, so when they get their archives up, you will be able to go back and hear even the first few shows. Um, the thing I, the thing I like most is that you can turn on conservative talk radio now and like at any time you want to, within 15 minutes, you'll hear somebody ranting about what a stupid idea Air Air America radio Uh is. And, and what, what seems the funniest is that while they're talking about it all the time, the number one criticism you hear about Air America radio is nobody's going to pay any attention to it. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> then yeah. why care? <laughs> you and know, you another, know, another concern, or another uh, uh, objection that I've heard frequently is, oh, well, conservative shows just happen to be conservative, but they don't label themselves conservative, or networks don't label themselves conservative. <laughs> okay. That's a lie, Pee Wee. <laughs> I mean, I just turned on the radio here in Austin, and there is a station here in Austin on, on AM there that... Yeah, they identify themselves as an Austin's conservative voice. So that's just a lie. One of them. What? One of Austin's conservative voices. But, but, but my, point is, my point is the station is presenting itself that way, as having a pre-existing bias, you know, which, is, which is fine. It's honest. And that is the best argument for Air America doing it. Yeah. A lot of Christian, sh- uh, Christian, <laughs> conservative shows don't Hard to separate them. Don't okay. clearly label themselves like that, and that is not 
That is not. Yeah, well, you know what I think is really funny is when you hear a conservative talk show host uh, saying, and I swear they all say this, so uh, this must have come down as one of the talking points somewhere along the line. Uh They they all take on this incredibly wise tone of voice and they say, you know, what these liberals don't get is that (laughs) more than just having an agenda, your show has to be entertaining. Ah. You see? (laughs) Good. Like, Great. God, I didn't realize like Al that. Al Franken isn't entertaining. <laughs> Gene Garofalo isn't entertaining. I don't Wait, think Which so. is especially funny coming from them, be- them, because when was the last time you heard them say something that was actually funny? <clears throat> right. <laughs> I mean. Right. I don't listen to these people, but I can tell you in print, they bomb. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They don't have, they don't have a, a humor nerve in their body. I mean, they Let's be honest here. They're only successful because you have Clear Channel buying up all the stations all over the country and pushing them into markets. Speaking Everywhere. of Clear Channel. Okay. The SEC has fined Clear Channel for $495,000 for a single Howard Stern broadcast that it considered indecent. It has also opened an investigation into Infinity Broadcasting over the same show. Though the FCC initially only received a complaint about one station, it elected to fine Clear Channel for every station in the network of stations that carried the show, with Commissioner Michael J. Kopp saying, The Commission makes it clear that its indecency enforcement will address not only the station that is the subject of the complaint, but also any other station that aired the same programming. Howard Stern believes the fines are politically motivated and posted a statement on his website. Here's Howard Stern's statement. This is not a surprise. This is a follow-up to the McCarthy-type witch hunt of the administration and the activities of this group of presidential appointees in the FCC, led by Colin Powell Jr. and his band of players. They and others, a senator from Kansas City to a, uh, to a congresswoman from New Mexico, are expressing and imposing their opinions and rights to tell us all who and what, this is badly written, <laughs> who and what we may listen to and watch and how we should think about our lives. So this is not a surprise. It is pretty shocking that governmental interference into our rights and free speech takes place in the U.S. It's hard to reconcile this with the land of the free and the home of the brave. I'm sure what's next is the removal of dirty pictures like the 20th century German exhibit in the New York Museum and the erotic literature in our libraries. They, too, will fall into their category of evil as well. Stern also pointed out that the transcript of the offending show was no more offensive than similar conversations held on the Oprah Winfrey show. But the commission decided to go after him and not after Oprah, saying, If they find me, they gotta find Oprah, the darling of the world. He told his listeners how to complain about the horrors of Oprah, and now the FCC is investigating her as well. Mm-hmm. That part I'd heard. The offending material in the Howard Stern show was a discussion of receiving oral sex while on the toilet using a a completely made-up word, which Stern described by saying, A blumpkin is receiving oral sex while you're sitting on a toilet bowl if you are a man. You're sitting on a toilet bowl and, uh, while you're evacuating, you receive your oral. To which co-host Robin Quivers thoughtfully replied, Ick. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, she... Normally I would expect her to reply... (laughs) <laughs> Clear Channel has dropped the Howard Stern show. Clear Channel president John Hogan said, Mr. Stern's show has created a great liability for us and other broadcasters who air it. The Congress and the FCC are even beginning to look at revoking station licenses. That's a, a risk we're just not willing to take. Who the hell listens to Howard Stern and doesn't expect to hear ick? <sighs> Stern believes the focus of his show, the focus on his show, is a result of the re- his recent criticisms of Bush. He recently told his audience, "You've got to vote Bush out uh, uh, to send a message as a Howard Stern fan. There is a cultural war going on. The religious right is winning. We're losing." According to the Tri Valley Herald, Clear Channel's, Channel's political action committee has donated two hundred and sixty-five thousand eight hundred dollars to Republican candidates for the two thousand four election, more than any other broadcaster. Mm-hmm. So, which of course guarantees that all these Bible shows where they go on about the incest of lost daughters and all the murders, well, they're never going to get censored. Even though they whipped violent. the Easter Bunny. Yeah, it's a thousand in front of a crowd of children. It's going to come up with. <laughs> Ooh, Howard Stern talked about oral sex on the toilet. Which is disgusting, by the way. God, what a nasty man. 
but as li- here's this is one thing that bothers me about us liberals. I don't, I don't, I'm assuming we all are. Correct me if I'm wrong. Okay, we liberals. Yeah, we me. liberals. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Howard Stern, offensive as he intentionally is, is exactly the sort of person we're supposed to be defending. Right. Right. We're just like the ACLU. <laughs> and taking this back to taking this back to um, uh, to Air America, I was listening to one of their programs. Um, I forget the name of the guy. It's not not Randy Rhodes. It's the guy. The guy the in the morning or the afternoon. Afternoon guy. Uh, the guy who sort of sounds like Rush Limbaugh yeah, a little bit. Yeah, that guy. Ed something. Ed something, right. Schwartz. No. <laughs> Whatever. Ed. <laughs> okay. Um, he t- was talking about this and basically came out against Howard Stern. Why do we do that to ourselves? Well, you can be against Stern, but also be even more vehemently against the FCC and their actions. Because if you're going to just walk in knee-jerk step with everybody else without yeah, thinking this, about that, your position and defending not, Stern just because he happens to be liberal, then you're no better than these conservatives. The, the thing I notice is that part of a tenet of liberalism, I think, uh-huh. is uh, accepting the, the thing that Voltaire said, which was something like, uh, I don't agree with what you say, but I'll defend to the death mm-hmm. your right to say it. Yeah. I actually threw a quote out there and and uh, to a message board one time, and conservatives dogpile it, saying, "What a stupid thing to say," which made me realize it's a very it's a very liberal value, right? To defend people you don't agree with or their right to say things, right? Uh, the the way that liberals we're for often rights. liberals often sure, get sure, uh, get beaten on because. They'll defend things that are unpopular. And, mm-hmm. yeah, and, yes. And you do sometimes have to make the separation that, no, 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 I'm not saying that I agree with the neo Nazis. I'm just saying they have the right to put their stuff out there. Right, defending the principle. I'm not comparing actor. Howard Stern to right, neo Nazis. Right, right. But it's okay not to be on the same page as Howard Stern, but still agree that it's wrong for him to get kicked off for political right. speech. And this, but see, I don't think these are at all related. I mean, mm-hmm. yet yes, the um, the ACLU uh, defends people who say really horrible things or promote right. really horrible sure. viewpoints, right? Mm-hmm. Howard Stern is just talking about things that people find icky. That's it. It's not like he's going out there saying, you know, yes, we white people really are the superior mm-hmm. race, and uh, and we ought to round up all non-white people and make them our slaves or exterminate them. I mean, he says nothing like that. He says he says nothing overt to promote behaviors that would be uh, that would be dangerous. Hey, well, he says I'm sorry, he talks about naughty you. things. What? <laughs> that's according to you. The the what you find ick. Yeah. The conservatives would probably find oh that's horrible. It will destroy. Right. It will destroy our culture. Right. It will and destroy you know what? Our society. And I, and I I think looking at this mimetically, they're right. wrong. But <laughs> but looking at this mimetically, I think one of the things, one of the ways conservatism survives and thrives is by appoint they appoint. It, it is the viewpoint that appoints itself the 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 guardian the, of today's society. The guardian of morality. They yeah. they are the They're ones the who arbiters. decide what you can talk about. Who the hell ever said you can't talk about sex? Well, the FCC. But who told them? Where did they get the idea? It's not the like it's Christ, some physical yeah. law yeah. that, yeah, it's it's religion that establishes these things in the first place. Mm-hmm. And and they succeed when they get us to really be bothered by the stuff they have set aside and said, you can't talk about that stuff. Well, no, wait, you're conflating two things. I didn't say Am that, I? yeah, that Stern should not talk about that. I, th- I personally think it's absolutely incredibly disgusting. I'm sure other people. You know, have I'm not. I'm, I, I, but, but I don't think I'm. But that is. But I don't think I'm blaming you personally. No, no but not I, that. But, but I do know. There, 
Okay, go ahead. <laughs> no, I mean, just because a person happens to find a particular idea disgusting does not mean that he or she supports the censoring of the idea. Yeah. Like, I've never listened to Stern because I know how to use a freaking on-off switch, and I don't have to listen to him. Right. And I, I see it's because I've heard about things like what you just described is why I've never had an urge to listen to him. I don't think he should be off the air. I'm sure there are people who find him very amusing. Right. See, that's yeah. the difference. But, I'm not. Um, I'm not against that talk. I'm just against media. That, is the, way, that is the way conservatism has has largely become, even more in the last few years. Which is, uh, if you say something they don't like, uh, they don't argue about it. They they go get this guy off mm-hmm. the air. Keep this guy from saying right. saying what he says. Protect you us know, from, from boycott, practicing self control. You know, boycott so and so, boycott the Dixie Chicks, never buy a Dixie Chicks album again because they said something bad against President Bush. You know, e- even like with the, with the Al Franken feedback from people who have not even heard the show, uh-huh. I've heard a lot of people saying, ha ha, you know, nobody ever listens to Al Franken trying to sort of seed that idea out there. Right. Right. Even though, and I've got some actual, I've got some statistics. Oh yeah? <laughs> uh, yeah. People talking all week about how nobody was going to give a damn about Air America Radio yeah. uh, on Google Zeitgeist, uh-huh. uh, where where you can see what the most popular searches have been. Mm-hmm. Air America Radio was the number two most popular search all week. Wow! Uh, on day one of Where's their nonprofits. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Just checking. I don't think you want to know. <laughs> uh, on day one of the show, uh, there were 50,000 unique streams uh, coming from real networks. Uh, that was the very first day, and it was... No, that was just Al Franken's show on the very first right. day. They got 350,000 unique visitors the entire day, and something like 2 million unique visitors the first week. Woo! All right. Yeah. They have these stats on the website for the O'Franken Factor too, just O'FrankenFactor dot com. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But they want you to believe that nobody else uh is gonna listen to this because they want you to feel they want people who oppose them to feel isolated. Well blackmail is the yeah. only tool in the yeah, arsenal yeah. when you get right down to it. Either a god's gonna stomp you or a contractor is gonna pull out and not build your building, or we're gonna take away your FCC license. Yeah. So, I was gonna I was gonna give an example of um, anti Howard Stern prejudice okay. that has that reared its ugly head in the ACA. Okay. Um, Howard Stern is an atheist. He is one of us. He just okay. you know does not he does not toe the line on the question of what it is okay to talk about. And the line which, by the way, does not originate with liberals. It's a line that originates with conservatives. And right. yet they get us to buy into it. Into what? Into the idea that you that for example, that talking about sex is bad. No. I don't buy that. I, I mean about? I mean I don't mean us personally. I'm not talking about individuals here. I'm talking about liberals in general who will then bail and not defend Howard Stern on the on okay. not not merely not merely his right to say what he's saying, but to say you know the I, very idea that what, that the kind of stuff he talks about is bad to talk about is yeah. itself so, ridiculous. So liberals are doing that. Do you have an explicit yes, example? Penny. Yes, I was going to give an example. Okay, please yeah. do. Um, uh, a couple of years ago, we kicked around the idea for doing an uh, an atheist of the year award, and. Howard Stern's name name came up. A very large number of members of the ACA Board of Directors objected, not because Howard Stern had not been an outspoken criticism of religion, right, an outspoken supporter of rationalism, but because he talks about titties. The the idea that 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 uh, that, that should stand in the way of of recognizing the guy as Does, a, is he a, an outspoken yeah. proponent of rationalism. You don't listen to the show, so yeah. you don't. Well, that's why I'm asking. Yeah, <laughs> a yeah. proponent of rationalism. Yeah. yeah. So then, I, as far as I'm concerned, conservatism has done that to us. 
It's saddled, uh, when I say us, I'm talking broadly now, yeah. right? Not individuals. Broadly, that has saddled liberals with this embarrassment of supporting one another when there are, where there are those amongst us who are not gonna let our language be dictated and constrained by the, the yeah. rules that they've set up about what's well, okay to talk about. Conservatives are the people who set up propriety. Yeah. That's it. And so, and, but, and for some reason, everybody has to toe, toe that line. Right. To be considered. Right. Real. And I, know? I am yeah. of the, I am of the opinion that we should make an active effort to destroy that line. I really I agree. agree. How so? How would you go about that? Um, by talking about titties on my radio show. <laughs> <laughs> We've done that. We have done testicles. Testicles. Sure, sure. sure. Go ahead. Yeah, it's yeah, all fair game. Sure. Sure. So, what do you think about that? He testicles? was just naming his face. Titties are quite overrated. Titties and testicles, threat or menace? So we, have done, <laughs> we have done a great many shows. We, we, when, uh, we talked about dildo laws here, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 The, there, there is no subject that I think is. Is inappropriate to talk about on this show. Uh, we Karen, try to, we Karen try and to I say, refused to talk about incest when we were on the same show. That yeah, before. and I think that was a terrible <laughs> thing because it was a, a great opportunity. <laughs> it's just like when we talk about you know um, uh, African American issues on the show, and we have no African Americans here. It seems like we're wasting our time. Well, when we have a brother and sister, that is exactly the time to talk about incest. <laughs> To somebody else who knows about that. And given the makeup of the table, can we go into male homosexuality? Sure. sure. What about it? I don't know. What are y'all's thoughts? Uh, I'm for and, it. And we, <laughs> I don't care. I'm examples. not against it. <laughs> and that's another thing, by the way. I think that a lot of the best humor comes out of, of completely ignoring those lines. Yeah. And just talking about whatever the hell pops into your head. Then that that's why I think that when the conservatives criticize liberal radio and say that's not going to be entertaining, they're completely full of it. Yeah. As long as the liberals doing the show recognize that they should not feel constrained by the artificial limitations on language that conservatives have foisted on us. That's right. Uh by the way, quick chat room updates. Yeah. Uh Somebody asked what the number one most popular Google search search was, yeah. and the answer was any guesses? Sex. No. Sex. No. What? Hellboy. 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 What? Hellboy's Hellboy huge, huge, man. And Overcame sex. <laughs> and uh, somebody I don't think now claims. Sex anymore. I don't think so. Yeah. And somebody now claims that uh, while listening to the show, uh, they have turned from a newt into a human. So that is a genuine miracle. <laughs> Somebody's got better. <laughs> awesome. Talked up to our show in just an hour. Thank you very much. Um, by the way, we could take this opportunity to have a little quick vote on the uh, on the message boards. Um, uh, we'll take votes on uh, titties versus testicles. Uh, Everybody on the message board, vote for one or the other. Russell will compile them. <laughs> <laughs> which do you support, right? Then we can break them into jock straps and brassiers. Yeah. So it's like which camp? No further the explanation. Just vote for one or the other. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, okay. <laughs> Strangely, Jeff D has taught me a lot about adult toys. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> which, is, which is freakish because I don't really know that much about them. <laughs> But I'd love to. <laughs> okay, shall we do more news? <laughs> I, okay. He says do. Okay. I guess we will. <laughs> Come on, Russell. <laughs> hey. No, that's no good. I, I have some reader mail, actually. Sure. Uh, Luke Latulip. Uh, says, I listen to your show all the time up here in Vancouver, and I love it. Thanks Ooh, for doing this cool. and adding your voice. Any chance the folks at Air America might give you a show with them, too? Nationwide atheism. Woohoo. And my answer to him was, Luke, if you want to, if you want us to get on the Air America radio, and we wouldn't object, send your fan mail to them. <laughs> right. Uh, go to the Air America website. I'm serious here. If anybody listening to this oh. show would like to, Go to the Air America Radio 
website. You can only contact them right now by snail mail, but that's probably the most effective way to get them to pay attention to you anyway. Uh, send them a letter and say, listen to this show, the nonprofits. Uh, he also mentions, my mother sent me this link to a video on www.preservemarriage.org because she was appalled by it, not because she thought it was a good thing. Oh, I good. watched it right before the show. It's basically a bunch of still shots of, of like, images of people and a voiceover the whole time whining about what a horrible thing homosexuals are doing to the Is country. Is it pictures of gay people <laughs> doing gay sex? I didn't pay that much attention to the pictures. <laughs> I think you would have noticed. <laughs> <laughs> no, not actually doing the gay sex. Okay, good. <laughs> I think it had pictures of, like, happy families, uh, right. happy heterosexual families, uh, who would presumably be the threatened be, one. Who would, who would presumably have been torn apart and threatened by, oh, I don't know, what? <laughs> Homosexual marriage. Anyway, if you want to spend 20 minutes of your life that you'll never get back, again, oh. that site is preservemarriage.org. I just turned it on and walked away and cleaned right. the kitchen while yeah. it was playing. Uh, we also got a show from regular listener Zarathustra. Yeah, who email, wrote, you mean? Yes. What did I say? A show. You said we got a, a show. Message, from a message, an email saying, "Happy to report that a local theater near the University of Southern of South Carolina campus." Ladies and gentlemen, we have the first vote. Uh, first two votes. <laughs> oh no! Uh, three votes. <laughs> okay, hold it. Now, it boobies is like not on the list. Getting a Heavenly flag. fodder. You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to vote again because we're not. It's either or. <laughs> titties or testicles. Titties are titties are in the lead. <laughs> Very much so. Sorry, Linda. <laughs> and titties are in the lead. Coming around the corner. <laughs> Zaratustra says uh, that near the University of Southern Carolina campus, a theater showed the life of Brian on one screen while showing the Passion of Christ on the other. Okay. That's oh, very right. interesting. That's right. Life of Brian is showing. Is it? Is it starting? I don't know if it's... it's I don't know. I need to check to see it or see if it's I showing in town. Because we all got to go, man. Um, some people on AA were referring to this yesterday as Life of Brian Friday, so I assumed it had started oh. yesterday. All right, all right. Cool. All right, great. We should, we should go. We should go. We should go. Um, I don't know. I tried to watch that movie, and yeah, I was bored senseless by it. Mm. <gasps> Just don't get that. First cute, kill me. Yeah, that's right. You don't get that English humor, but oh. It's but uh, it's speaking of humor. that, the website Preserve Marriage, blah blah. Um, uh, there is a there is a further effect that the right, the conservative right, achieves by demonizing certain kinds of behaviors, mm-hmm. and that is it. It is a product that they are creating. Because they can then go back to their followers and say, remember that thing, that gay sex thing that we told you was so bad? Well, give us a bunch of money and we'll fight it. Buy right? your PreserveMarriage.org they, they, they t-shirts create, today. That is a, a way of creating a problem out of nothing that they can then use to suck money out of their Right. Own flock. Yeah. But also, the way they absolutely rape the language by re- using phrases like preserve marriage, restore the Constitution. Uh-huh. Even yeah, though yeah. with the oh, Constitution sure. restoration. Oh, sure. They've got to spin it. They've got to Just... spin it that they are, that they are in the right, right? Oh, that absolutely. they're doing the right thing. That's part of the whole right. money, I, money. I remember money another thing right. they said now, which is, uh, you know, the, the homosexuals want to take the rights away from the voters by not letting them vote on whether we should oh, prevent them from God, marrying what or not. Twisted, which, yeah. Wow. Twisted logic. But, but again, bringing this back to what I was saying before, if everybody was just comfortable with the existence of gay sex, that would deprive the conservative right of a product. Mm-hmm. That's right? true. That is doing the uh, mimetic equivalent of destroying the market for uh-huh. for, for programs, boneheaded ideas. For the, the market yeah. for programs to oppose gay sex, right? Because nobody would care. Yeah, the more we can get people to not care about the kind of crap that they want people to care about, the more we deny them money-making opportunities. Mm, good point. 
and we keep one by one we're taking all the enemies away from them that they had to fight. Right now they're down to pretty much nothing but homosexuals and atheists. That's right. Yeah. And we can fend for ourselves, right? Because communism collapsed. <laughs> Until Jesus <laughs> comes and slays the flesh from our bodies. Yeah, That's right. True. But he'll have testicles, so he may not be effective. Do we have a single vote for testicles yet? Uh, we have one vote for both, but everybody else has voted for titties. I'm sorry, there's no, there's no both. <laughs> or pick one. So, basically, uh, titties won in a landslide. <laughs> titties in a landslide. Okay, thank you, folks. Although, you know, taking a we cue from, from the American president, I don't want to count the votes too early. <laughs> Perhaps those in Florida didn't understand the rules of the... Oh, never mind. <laughs> Brian wants us to plug the pro-choice rally again, saying infidel guy will be there. Yeah, you know what? Um, I think that that is absolutely right. We should promote stuff like that. But yeah. the time to be to be reminded to promote stuff like that is not during the middle of our show. It's actually earlier. Uh, it's probably before the show would before be Before the show... Idea. Brian, in future, uh, what we need you to do is email us in advance so we can have all of our ducks in a row when we go to promote something and not kind of babble inanely like I did last time when you suggested we promote that and I kind of stumbled over my words saying, yeah, that was great, when I really had no idea what I was talking about. Good thinking. Um, okay. Um, one poor Spalding High um, High School student in a... Uh, in, broadca- in a broadcasting TV assignment sent through the school, said the Pledge of Allegiance, being an atheist, he left out our two most favorite words <laughs> and was severely punished. According severely to the news- punished? Yes. According to the News Tribune, Kenny Hess was punished for using school equipment for delivering a personal message and was banned what? from further TV productions for the duration of the school year. What? According to a Bethel School District spokesman, quote, he made a poor choice. Unquote. All he did was he said the Pledge of Allegiance without under God in it. Right. And that is what he did. the pledge. Uh huh. <sighs> Could it be that Michael Newdow is right about the pledge being abusive? Kenny was an atheist. To say the pledge would contradict his values on God. Furthermore, to say that his pledge was a personal message is an absolute lie. Although the FTC clearly does not like the. Uh, this is from a website called like morons.com. Mm hmm. And it's a, it's a blog, so that's why this is written in a very, you know, non-professional kind of way. Yeah. Although the FCC clearly does not like the use of airwaves to direct a personal message to anyone, there must be a two-party uh, run in that line. Hess sure wasn't expressing a personal message on the air, that's for, sh- uh, that's for sure. So what's left? He could say he was making an opinion, that, uh, stating an opinion that was bad, but that violates the idea of free speech. But he wasn't anyway. stating an opinion. No, it wasn't an opinion. All he did was he uh, he broadcast the pledge without under God in it. Actually, if this is the same, I'm assuming this is the same thing I read about myself earlier. The FCC and the word broadcast are incorrect because it was within in, entirely in school closed circuit television. Yeah, I, I stopped, it was not actually broadcast. I stopped reading this story at that point because I don't think the person who wrote it really knew what they were talking about. Okay. But the issue is, there's this real high school student yeah. who really used school equipment to broadcast the Pledge of Allegiance, at least within the school, without the words under God, and he got punished. And he managed to do it without without busting the Constitution. Good for yeah. him. Um, he didn't burst into flames or... Huh? Yeah? I have to throw something in before we run out of time. Hey! Uh, we have found, thanks to, I think, BNAM about half an hour ago... Uh-huh. Uh huh. A place where you can get archived shows from Air America Radio. Ooh, cool. It's done privately. They say at the bottom of the page, this site is in no way affiliated with Air America Radio, which once again is airamericaradio.com. dot uh, com. The archive site is airamericaplace.com. dot com. Yeah, but I want to remind all of our listeners: please don't let your listening to the uh, to Air America cut into your very important support of AtheistNetwork.com. That's right. You know, uh, Reggie and the boys need your support as well. Uh, but that's why you get why the archives are good. That's so right. So that you are not forced to choose right. between listening to a show on one that's or the other. Right. Listen to everything. Okay. Um, how much time we got? Uh, two. Two minutes. Well, just a quick thing then. Um, yeah, a, a study at UCLA, uh, uh, 
found that 75% of the participating students said religious or spiritual beliefs play an important part in helping form their identity, but it also reported the number of students who marked none as their religious preference had increased to a record high of 17.6%. Excellent. Uh, so it's going up. We're still a minority, but... Yeah. And of course, well. the Christians would jump on comments like religious or spiritual and claim them for themselves. Yeah, right. right. But people are less scared, you're saying, and of, of course, actually that calling that themselves say, non-believers. We need more religion. Yeah. Right. That's the impression. That's, that's some certainly kind of a good thing. Well, As if there was a problem. This has this has been a uh, a rollicking show. Um, yeah. And uh, thanks everybody for being on the show. Sure. Always appreciated. That was great. Uh-huh. Dennis, what uh, City of Heroes character were you playing this morning that made you late? Uh, it wasn't this morning. It was last night, uh, which means I got to bed at like 4.30 or time? something like that. Was Let's it the Crimson Stranger? Um, yes. Uh, yeah? No, it was, a, it was a new one. Yeah? Doc Futurian. So, yeah. Doc Futurian. <laughs> yeah. Very retro costume. Very nice. I made... Uh, Oh, okay. We got, uh, we're running out of time. Uh, we'll talk to you, tell you more about City of the Heroes next time. Linda, thank you very much. Oh, we can't. Bye, wait. everyone.